Welcome to Mapperton, our family home and estate in Dorset in the southwest of England. Julie and I took over running Mapperton a few years ago from my parents, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. It's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. This place is full of fascinating stories, extraordinary people, and endless repairs. So please join our family on this journey of a lifetime as we put all our efforts into preserving this magnificent part of England's heritage. So we're here in the kitchen at Mapperton. Um, I've got a nice cup of herbal tea and I'm thinking about the future of the estate. Um, and we've got five farms on the estate and they vary in terms of their productivity. Some are very good pasture. We've got some decent arable. But it's clear that not all of the land here is actually terribly good for producing food. Some of it might be better simply serving the purposes of wildlife and biodiversity. So what we've decided to do is to take back one of the farms. It's called Coltley Farm. I'm looking at it here on the map. It's about 180 acres. And we're going to allow a process of natural regeneration called rewilding to take place. Rewilding is something that has been pioneered in Sussex by Charlie Burrell and his wife Isabella on their estate where they've had tremendous success letting the estate go back into a state of nature. The key thing is to try and provide a balance between the flora and the fauna to replicate the environment that we might have seen thousands of years ago when we had grazing megafauna like aurochs and deer and wild boar all living together in balance with the vegetation because obviously these two things evolved together. The plants evolved with the animals and vice versa, and we've lost that. And we all know the trouble that we're in, in terms of the loss of biodiversity in the countryside here. And this is one of the ways to restore it. And we're incredibly excited about it. One of the things that we all need to take stock of is that we haven't treated the countryside very well. Intensive farming has obviously done wonders in many respects for food production, but it's rather denuded the countryside, in particular the soil. A lot of the nutrients that would have grown over time and been sustained through natural processes have been washed away because of the constant use of fertilizer and chemicals and plowing. And I think that we all need to think differently. But where we've got land like the sort of land that we've got here, where the topography is up and down these dramatic beautiful coombs and valleys and it's very wet. You know, it's not great food producing land and it's really much better suited to restoring wildlife. Rewilding doesn't mean that you can't build a business because actually there are lots of things that we can do. We can have people coming on uh, British wildlife safaris. That's one of the things that NEP has been so brilliantly successful at. People coming and enjoying the extraordinary range of exciting species that we have here, particularly the ones that, that are returning. And, um, and I think all of those things together mean that rewilding for Coltley is absolutely the right thing to do, and I can't wait. I'm also particularly excited because I've got my son Nestor. He's 14, and he's an absolutely determined naturalist, and he wants to see all of our species that have been lost returned to nature. There's a mink. No way. Wow. That is exciting. And I want to do this to make sure that he and the next generation and the generations to come can really enjoy the countryside with all of the animals and the plants and the vegetation that we would have seen thousands of years ago. So we have to take various steps at Coltley in order to introduce this rewilding project. You don't want to do it all straight away. But what I thought I'd do, because this is, a lot of this is, is quite new to me, um, I'm learning and I've been reading various books and I've been talking to people and getting some really good advice.
but I thought that I would go directly to NEP and talk to the experts. Most helpfully, NEP has um, a consultant, he's a conservationist working there called Ivan de Klee, and one of his roles is to work with other estates to give them advice. And so Ivan's been to visit and he's produced this wonderful document which provides a kind of blueprint for what we might think of doing at Mapperton based on the experiences that they've had at NEP, where they've had such a wonderful success restoring wildlife. They've got turtle doves that have come back. They've got purple emperor butterflies in profusion. They've got storks nesting. Uh, I mean, it's astonishing. It felt, it felt a little bit like walking into the African savannah. Of course, these aren't African animals, but there was a wildness, there was a thrill to the, to the natural environment. So uh, actually, while I think about it, um, maybe what I'll do is give him a call and we can let him tell us the reasons that he's so excited about Coltley uh, and then we can go up and look at the land ourselves and meet the wonderful Tom and Sophie Gregory who are our, our farming partners who are going to help us with this. Ivan, incredibly good to see you. You were here uh, three or four months ago, I think doing a wonderful report for Mapperton at the start of our rewilding journey. You work as a conservationist at NEP Estate. NEP has yeah. really been the pioneer of rewilding in this country. As I understand it, your, part of your job is actually to help other estates like ours look at the opportunities for rewilding in their areas. Well, so I'll just quickly explain what NEP have been doing and why, why they've ended up being someone who gives advice. Charlie Burrell, the owner of NEP, came out of Siren Agricultural College with every bit of high, you know, modern agricultural knowledge. And he went home to NEP to farm it and to farm it intensively and to make food and to do really well from it. And he spent a number of years intensifying, getting better machinery, get, putting in higher inputs and really, really trying to get the most out of his land. That land, however, was on very heavy Sussex clay. And of all the years that he was intensifying, putting all these modern practices to the land, he only really made a profit two or three years out of those. And he knew something was broken. They were inspired by a, a Dutch ecologist called Franz Vera about something called grazing ecology and this concept of rewilding, which is the idea that large herbivores roam the land shaping the land by the way they graze and disturb and um, impact their surroundings so whether you're a wild boar rootling and turning over the soil and creating bare ground or you're a deer eating uh, browsing scrub or you're a cow grazing all of these interactions shape the land and create ecological niches for other for other species and the what's happened in the last 20 years is it's in the most incredible ecological recovery. The, the wildlife gains and the biodiversity recovery has just been extraordinary for rare species, common species, everything is just flooded back to the land. And that's why NEP has become so well known and such a leader in, in sort of modern conservation, this, this buzzword rewilding. And I think um, you'll be pleased with what we've done. So since you gave us um, that really stimulating report, um, we were talking about Coltley, which is an area of, of roughly 200 acres, uh, a farm of, of quite marginal productive value. It's, it's interesting, when I took Mapperton on, people would always say, oh, it's not a very productive estate, and mm. they kind of sigh a little bit. And, and of course, that may be true for food production, but it's mm. not true um, for our own enjoyment of this beautiful landscape, but also in terms of the biodiversity potential. Um, and so, um, Ivan, just give me a sense, when you, when you came to Coltley and, and looked at the area that we were looking at, what, what were your impressions and what were your thoughts about our opportunity? Well, you'll remember I got very overexcited very quickly because it's such a stunning, such a stunning location. It's up, up the hill from Mapton itself. Um, and it's already, because of this low production value, as you, as you say, it's already been managed in a fairly low intensity way. And the first thing you notice comparing Coltley to a conventional farm is that the hedgerows are already two or three times wider than they would be in a, a well-kept, high, you know, high production system. Not only was it the, the sort of staggering views, 
looking all the way down to the sea, the boggy patches, which most farmers would be worried about, thinking, oh, well, I won't be able to graze there. I immediately saw opportunities for wetlands and scrapes and I just got, I was, I loved it. I was absolutely blown away. One of your recommendations in the report was to bring in some um, low intensity grazing with a native uh, species. And the terrific news is that we've got a herd of White Park cattle. I believe White Park are, are one of the oldest English native breeds. And so that's the start. And those cattle should be arriving within the next month or so. So the journey oh, is so has exciting. Really and the gates are all being flung open so that the cattle can, can go wherever they want. Uh, we have identified a Tamworth crossed with a wild boar. I thought that might... Oh, wow. Very really, exciting. Really, yeah. Who's, yeah, who's that was due, great fun. Who, who's due to have piglets later this year. Um, but one thing we're slightly worried about, uh, based on, on your advice, um, is I think you said that, that a single sow they can churn up something like 60 acres. Is that, is that that's, really a worry? That's an estimate made by Charlie. Um, they open up the sward, the grass, looking for, for grubs and roots and tubers and all tasty things un, under the top layer of soil. Brilliant. And, and please come back really soon. It's going to be an amazing, well, it already is an amazing site. Here we are in Coltley Farm Yard, which obviously used to be an active farm, but these days the buildings are fairly redundant and falling to pieces. I'm not sure you'd hold many cattle here uh, <laughs> as things stand. One of the things that is really exciting for me about this project, frankly, is that we found both of you who share this commitment to looking at land management and farming rather differently but I'm leaving it to both of you yeah. to choose what we're bringing in so tell us something about the cattle that you've found. Yeah so we've uh, we've recently um, been down into uh, down into Devon to a really lovely guy who's the uh, vice chairman of the uh, British White Park Cattle Society who's got a great breeding herd of White Park cattle and um, he's really kindly allowed us to um, buy some of his um, pedigree animals to to bring back up here. And, what, and what, tell us about White Park cattle. What's so special about White Park? Well, there's only 900 breeding females in, in the UK and um, they're all registered um, to be pedigree. They have to be registered with the society. Um, they've got black noses, um, black around the eyes, black feet and their udders as well are black. Um, and they're, they've got beautiful, beautiful big horns. Um, yes, they, they kind of remind me of, of Texas Longhorn. Yes. I mean, the horns yeah, just yeah, go yeah. on and on, aren't they? Yeah. Which I think probably makes them a bit safer because if they yeah. come at you, yeah. you know, they're, they're, you're not going to get gored no. immediately, are you? No, I think we did a bit of research and um, we went to see this guy. And, and when we went down there, one of the first things I did was just ask if it was OK to go in the building and just place myself in the middle of the building, see how the animals would uh, react around a complete stranger just sat there. And um, they were quite inquisitive um, and just completely very docile. Very docile, yeah. yeah. And um, really quite friendly. Have they got yeah. names? Yeah, one of them's called Una. Una. Uh, Una, yeah. Every cow here is going to have a name. Yeah, is, exactly. is that right? Yeah, every so... cow will have a name, and um, they, yeah, they've got two ear tags, and their name will be on there. So hopefully, yeah. it'll be nice to follow. We're, we're hoping we might put some GPS on them to track them down. We've, we'll have the cattle here. They're what two-year-old heifers. Yeah, is so, that right? Yeah, t um, three. Three, two, six, three-year-old. And, and are they going to calf at some point? What's, yeah. the, what's the plan? So aim to get them in calf um, for next year, to calf next year. Calf next um, year. And, and then, leave the followers, leave the yeah, calves with them. with them. And then, yeah, at some point have some, some meat to sell to the public, which is phenomenal meat. Um, and I'm hoping, having access to such a big area, that they, they'll be able to pick and choose what they like to eat. So I think the yeah. taste will be in. And, and another interesting thing about them is that they're not just grazers, i.e. No, they're... Tell us, tell us a yeah, bit more. Yeah, so, so we've, 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 what we've learned with, about the white parks is they will browse as well. They're, they're just as happy browsing on bushes and shrubs and trees as they are 
eating grass, um, which I think is, is really going to help with the, the intensity of the flavour and the sort of nutrient density, the minerals they're pulling out from different um, plants and shrubs and trees. There's something about Tom, isn't there? Yeah. And, and <laughs> ancient herds of yeah. cattle that sort of gets them out of bed. Because yeah. you get out of bed pretty early, yeah. but you're probably getting out of bed even earlier to, to make it here, to, to look after these ones. Yeah, no, these are pretty cool. I think um, native, native cattle has always been in my family. Right. Um, I think at least four generations have always been breeding native British cattle. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something, I like to say, farming's in your blood. And I think it's, yeah. it's a real interest I've got. I have Good. no idea why, but it's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we have some exciting new visitors arriving. Longhorns, 1,000 kilograms in weight, and also one of England's oldest breeds of cattle. These are the White Park cattle. Now, there are only a 1,000 of them in the UK, and we have got three of them. They'll be arriving here in this small paddock first, as they've just spent the night in a trailer, which can't be too comfortable. So, apparently, they're a little timid and, and, and skittish, so we don't really want them running across the whole 200 acres of, of Coatley. However, later on, they will be moving over there, where they'll shortly be visited by Tamworth pigs and Exmoor ponies. Now, I believe I can hear the sound of the car arriving, so let's get down there and open the gate. Just got a couple of glimpses of them and their horns are definitely, they're definitely very long. Obviously we're meant to be over at Coatley Farm, but we're here at Marsh Farm. Why are we here instead of over there? I just felt they're a little bit on edge and right, I didn't okay. want to release them into the wild. How long do you think that they'll be in this field? Just until they calm down or? Yeah, I think we'll give them a couple of days in the facilities that we've yeah. got here, which will be really easy. And then we can, um, we can wander them on down. All right. Well, I think that we should take a look at what we've got in there. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> got it. Right, we'll give them a minute and hopefully yeah. they'll... Um, Let's stand back. They'll find their own way out. They've got amazing horns. They're really well marked. They've got all the markings we want, so they should be really good breeding stock. They've got the black ears, the black nose, the black eyes, the black teats. They've never been in a trailer before, so they're just a bit scared. They're a yeah, bit yeah, nervous yeah, yeah, yeah. of us and the new surroundings. Yeah, so we're pretty yeah, confident well. after a couple of days in this paddock, um, and maybe we've got their bucket, we'll shake a couple of nuts yeah. and I think they'll be right back to normal. So we are currently walking up Marsh Farm and hoping to find the cows that we've just released. When we let them go, they just sprinted off, so I'm not sure. But let's, let's continue up. Actually, I think, yes, I can just about see them over the top of this next hill. Now, I don't want to get too close to them because, as Tom said, they're pretty skittish and timid right now. So that usually means they might be quite aggressive. Um, but I don't blame them, they've been in a trailer for a whole night or something. There they are. And look at that, they're already grazing. So these guys, okay, they can gain one kilogram of weight every day. I think now they're getting near to being full grown, but when they are, they can be 800 kilograms for the heifers and one ton for the bulls. They're a pretty large species of cow. Um, but it's good to see them grazing, shows that they're probably quite comfortable here. And this is just the start of our rewilding journey. There are lots of other things I want to do at Coltley as well. We've got this, um, this wonderful barn up in front of me, which as you can see has almost completely collapsed, which is very sad, but, uh, but we're hoping to rescue it and we're hoping to convert it into a house at some point. It's got probably the best views on the estate. But for the time being, we've got this extraordinary project of rewilding Coltley, which is so exciting. Um, and we're starting this process of restoring nature, allowing there to be a much better balance between the flora and fauna here. I can't wait to see what things are going to look like 
in a couple of years. Um, and please join us on this journey. We're going to be making more episodes. Um, this is one of our first films, but the first of many. And uh, we're delighted to share it all with you. So uh, we'll see you next time. What the beavers do is, I mean, very, very simply by impounding water, by felling trees, by doing the multiplicity of things they do, is they kiss the earth again with life.